Hey everyone, Laser here. Uh, we're gonna play a blue-orange Stompy deck that I was playing around with. It's not particularly refined, but it's it's a lot of fun for me so far, so I want to give it a try. Um, we're running kind of just a bunch of really well-statted creatures across all of the mana curve, with a little bit of utility thrown on top of it. Our early game is kind of some of the staples, four copies of Einar Thrain because it's really, really good, a couple of demolition speedways to, you know, stomp things. And on the orange side, we got four eager recruit because it's very, very good value. One copy of ghoul maybe should be two. Not sure on that really right now, but a two, three body is always good. Uh, healing and then getting things out of the boneyard for uh, any sort of recursion effects is really, really powerful. And then three, two copies of Xerxes recruiter for draw because it's really, really nice to have draw. Our, our mid game turns three through five are very, very strong. We have a Black Hatter, which can really just run amok if you manage to get it rolling. Fossil Grim is great utility. One Freaky Sidecar along one Resupply Caravan for burst options. I need to put in more repetitions with the deck before I really know which I prefer, so I'm going to leave both in for now and see which one performs better. I, I feel like Resupply Caravan is probably going to be better because our goal is going to be maintain board control with our large units and then we can get an extra attack with the resupply caravan so i think resupply is probably gonna end up being better than the sidecar but we'll see uh broggy kara and thunderclap because those are just really really strong cards one valkyrie enforcer because necromantic is not all too popular right now but that could change and also because it's a very good tempo tool black and jotun is enormous and stompy magnus for a little bit of board control and uh Clearing the way for your other big minions to stomp their way to victory. On the orange side, one parry at the gates because getting two draws for a 2-2 two -two is ridiculously good. Three serendipity ifrit because it's the orange stompy card. It's just it's really good. Uh, Sign of Pride is crazy versatile. Hard to describe in one go why it's good, but it just has a lot of value over time. Maybe Like for instance, turning something like a Xerxian Recruiter or one of your uh, Parser Recruits or yeah, Parser Recruits into a 4-4 four -four can be crazy crazy strong. Two Seal of Exile for removal, one Temptation because it's kind of tricksy. Uh, I'm not I'm not sure it's really great because normally you don't want games to go on long enough to where you're using Temptation instead of burning it, but we're going to try it. Solomon's Gale, I opened from a pack and this is the reason I'm playing the deck, so it's it's going in there. It's a fun card, it snowballs insanely hard. The reason we're running uh two of the Demolition Speedways is partially to enable uh, getting chip damage through, which Solomon's Gale is really, really good with, because it uh, gets the breach effect, gets Alpha Strike, so really nice. Two shell for board control, and because it's absurdly chunky, really hard to remove without hard removal, and lavish proxy because we are a little bit susceptible to getting run over by aggro, and if we have a lavish proxy that we can defend, then, well, they can't really do anything, but die. For our uh, path and power, we're running Turn of Seasons, maybe should change after the nerf. I don't really think so, though. There's not a lot that I would prefer. Um, I think usually you'll want the draw from fall more than you would want um, a recursion from your graveyard. So I, I think I like turn of season still and impel because being able to move around is crazy. good. So that's the deck. We're going to. Yeah, I'm changing the name. Um, we're going to give it a little bit of a run. See how it goes. All right, we found a game. Question mark. Game, game, game. Player. Come on. Come on, player. Let's let's do this. Let's let's play this game. Okay, there we go. Nice. We are against Solaire. Nice name. Using the Master of Shadows. Ooh, and they got the new buffed rainbows end with the coin. Our hand kind of sucks. Uh, we don't need a brainstorm, so we'll get that. I'm going to guess they're probably on... Oh, they're on purple. Okay, nothing from them. Uh, Almost certainly going to be putting down Ifri next turn. I don't really want to get rid of Seal of Exile, but... I think it's probably the best play. Even though we don't know what they're playing... I can go three, four, and then our fives are pretty good. So I can, actually, I can get, I can get rid of brainstorm now. I think I'm okay with that. And then 
very, very likely try and draw into a different orange that we can burn, and we can burn Seal of Exile if we really need to, because Ifrit is really strong. Not getting a 1 or a 2 does kind of hurt, but we, we run comparatively few of them, so it's not all that surprising. Okay, given that this can get life tap, and plus 1 plus 0 can go up to 3 with another trick, it can trade evenly, but on the off chance that it can't, what I'm going to do is play the Fossagram, because it has the regen, try and get a value trade. Then next turn, very, very likely get Kara down, because if Kara snowballs, then Kara is absolutely frightening and can wrecking ball all over a game. By the way, if you haven't yet, uh, you can enter the code FOXFIRE, F-O-X-F-I-R-E, all in caps, and that will get you this really, really cute card back designed by one of the community members, so definitely suggest it. It's, it's pretty great. Our opponent played a stealth minion and has not attacked. Okay, cool. We can attack in there. We don't know what this is yet. There's a lot of possibilities. It could be. It could be any of the shinobis. It could be a mimic. We don't know. Broggy is the safest play. We don't need Frankie's sidecar anytime soon. This lets us filter through our cards. Zerks and Recruiter is pretty good. Uh, we can get rid of Brainstorm because we have this for draw instead. Brocky is nice because if they if this is Shinobi of Wind, if it teleports, then this can't be damaged by that. Ooh, Earth Slide. So they're... We've already seen them burn two enchantments, so that makes some amount of sense. Looks like it probably is either Wind or the one that doesn't take retaliatory damage, so we can trade into Fossigrim. What's it gonna be, Soleil? Okay, interesting. Okay! Sure, uh... I mean, we take those. <laughs> we're gonna... We're gonna try another game. All right, game number two, you're against Aya. They are on souls. Ooh, this hand is really, really good. I like this hand a lot. Uh, we can get rid of one recruit, seeing as we have a one, two, and then three already kind of lined up. So we're not going to use the other one. Ghoul and Thane are both really, really good here. Okay, they're on purple, so it might still be red-purple aggro. Uh, don't know yet. We're going to burn the Seal of Exile because we don't really feel like we need it. Seeing as we are trying to get damage through, we're going to spread the board out. Not sure if that's exactly right. Well, we'll see how that goes. Okay, Sword Saint. That's fine. Um... We can go ahead and just attack through this. Uh, get rid of the Sword Saint. We don't want them getting more life gain. And then play the Parser Recruit. No. Get rid of the Enforcer and play the... So now we have Thane and uh, Ghoul are a really, really good combo. Also noteworthy, the <clears throat> Journey of Souls still procs if they don't have anything in there. So they still lost all three souls which is phenomenal. But we see that they burned red. They burned a Fawn of Decay. So maybe a... Uh, ooh, Lavish Proxy. Nice. Probably going to burn that, though. Don't think we need it now. Um, but it could be some sort of mid-range deck. We're going to go ahead and just attack through and play Kara. Burn Blackheader to... Um, Carrot, we're going to protect by putting it next to some other creatures. So if we need to, we can trade through. And this is kind of one of what the deck wants to do. We've established board control, and now we're pushing our advantage with overstatted creatures pretty much every turn so that we can snowball the board control into lethal damage. 
That's almost exactly what this deck wants to be doing. Alright, that's fine. They get some health back. We can temptation that so we can do some damage and then they have to redeploy it which is really strong. Thunderclap we want to keep because that can help us push for lethal. We'll temptation this. Back through. Do the two more damage to their face. Uh, we're not going to need lavish proxy. And I would rather get the Parser Recruit down to be able to try and push through the last bit of damage. So we only need three damage right now, and then Thunderclap can finish it off. And there we go! So that, that's actually exactly how the deck wants to play. We get a very, very strong board presence early, and then convert that into a lot of damage pushed as soon as we've established board control. So, uh, that was that. That's the orange-blue Stompy that I've been working on. Uh, might play that for another video as well, just because I think this build has a lot of potential. Reminds me a lot of Mid-Sorcerer from Elder Scrolls Legends, or like a mono-green Stompy from Magic the Gathering, which is a deck style that I really enjoy, so I'll likely be playing either this deck or variations on the theme of trying to do mid-range Stompy decks for a little while. Um, unless something really cool comes out and I want to make a video on it. So, that was a cool deck. There will be a list for it in the description. If you liked it, please like and comment on the video. Subscribe to the channel if you would like to see more of it. It really, really, really helps. Um, and if there's any decks that you guys are super curious about or have been trying to a lot of success and want to see me play, let me know. I'd love to give it a run. There will be a new video, hopefully on Friday, trying to get back on schedule after some real life stuff got in the way. So keep a lookout for that. And until then, see you next time.